Oh, we're back again in the living room as well. Just to tell you boys, right? I have now purchased a car. We are finally on the road. So you can expect some upcoming videos to be in that vehicle. Stay tuned for that. But today I wanted to tell a story that makes me laugh when I think about it. And it's essentially just me being a simp. Now, there's many different, you know, people have different definitions of simp and what have you. My definition is essentially a guy that's just like, you know, very needy, always, you know, you know, letting themselves be a doormat, essentially. They're letting women walk all over them and doing everything. I mean, like, oh, yes, yes, please, you know, I'll donate to your Twitch stream so I feel like I've got a girlfriend. Um, but in my case, it was kind of different, but still kind of simping. So let's give some context to this story. So in my college, when I was back there, this one must be like, I don't know how long ago it was now, a year or two ago, maybe I was still in college. And my college had this thing called mental health awareness week. So it would be like, oh, you can walk into school and get a free breakfast, which would be like an apple or some cereal bar that's packed with, you know, great nutrients and stuff. Or you could like, <laughs> write what write down something that you like um it was like something that makes you happy and you had to put it on a post-it note and stick it on this wall obviously people took the piss there was like <laughs> unspeakable things on there but we're not getting to that and another aspect of this mental health awareness week was karaoke at lunchtime now i've been a i'm a guy who's like not afraid to perform in front of people i remember when i was eight years old I entered my school talent show and won it, albeit with a very terrible Star Wars parody, but we're not going to get into that. And I thought, you know, what the hell, I'll do the karaoke. And I was like, what am I going to sing? And at the time, after seeing the Elvis Presley biopic, I'd really started to like his music. So I thought, why don't I do Hound Dog by Elvis Presley and do all of like, you know, hip gyrations and pelvis actions and whatever. So I was like, yeah, go on. And like people that I know were asking me saying, oh, are you doing the karaoke? I was like, yeah. So I head up to the karaoke and of course people are expecting just some shit performance. Some guy just stood there like, <laughs> you know, terrible squeaky voice. Now I'm not the best singer, but I make up for it with my, you know, choreography. So I'm there dancing away. You know, people are cheering. People are like, oh my God, they're crazy. After it's finished, the euphoria I felt like the whole like, you know, lunchroom was clapping. I had people, you know, cheering me. When I came off the stage, I had like people coming up to me, like dapping me up. Uh, when I went to the gym earlier that day, they were like, oh my God, Elvis. And that came became like somewhat of a nickname, how people know me. They didn't even know my real name. They just be like Elvis. And it also meant that there was now girls talking to me. So I'd just be like walking in the corridor and there'd be some girls saying, oh my God, Elvis, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. And of course, um, me not being the Chad that I am today, I didn't know how to like respond to this because I've just never had, you know, girls come up to me and like start conversations with me or, you know, point me out or whatever. So I didn't know what to say. So I just sort of like smile at them. I just be like, yeah, thanks. Or, you know, not knowing what to do. My brain was just broken. But, you know, so that's how I became well-known at my college. Um, you know, teachers would call me Elvis. People were surprised. I pre pleasantly surprised people, essentially. Uh, fast forward into the summer of that year. I'm in Turkey with my best friend's family, you know, having a great time partying, doing some of the Elvis moves as well because they played Jailhouse Rock one of the evenings. And I get a Snapchat message from a friend in one of my biology classes who also did music tech. And he sent me a message saying, oh, this girl's been trying to add you on Snapchat who's in my music tech. She needs some help with like her music project. And I noticed that this girl had added me on Snapchat, but I didn't know who she was. You know, I'm not, I'm not that desperate, guys. I was like, I don't know who this girl is, so I'm not going to add her. <laughs> and I was like, oh, right, okay. So I added this girl. And she's like, oh, you know, um, hi, I'm so-and-so's friend. I saw you do the karaoke in the courtyard. I thought it was really good. And I'm looking for a male vocalist for this uh, song I'm doing. She was like, um, it was part of a music project. It was a 
Stevie Wonder song. It's like, I wish those days could come back once more. I don't remember the name of the song, but it's a Stevie Wonder song. It has a nice bass beginning. I was just like, oh, that's cool. You know, I'd get the opportunity to use like the college recording studio and stuff. And, um, you know, it was just a nice opportunity. So we're like, you know, messaging back and forth. And obviously me being like the jumping, uh, smirky guy. I was like messaging her. I was asking like, you know, her interest and stuff on text messages, which now I don't really like doing. I just prefer interacting with people and using, you know, Snapchat, Instagram or messages as a, you know, a way of meeting up, a means to an end, so to speak. And so I'm messaging her and she's doing that thing that I see loads of girls doing on Snapchat, whereas they'll like take a photo like this and make some like stupid face with like a caption and sort of sending me a message. And I remember she sent me uh, one of the, these things. And by the way, this girl was absolutely magnifique, fit as the day is new, my boys. And so, of course, that's why I kept messaging her, you know, even though I was like, oh, you know, what am I supposed to say? So she sent me one of these, like, weird, quirky, staring into my soul kind of pictures. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to shoot my shot. So <laughs> instead of I shoot... <sighs> It was so cringe. I used like the most basic compliment that you can think of, which is complimenting a girl's eyes. But I wanted to do it in like a, you know, quirky kind of way because I'm different to all the other guys. So I said like, when she sent me one of those weird photos, I said, oh, what color are your eyes, by the way? Because they were like a weird mixture. And she said, oh, they're kind of like a bluey green color. Why? And I said, oh, they're very, uh, you've got very nice eyes, by the way. I'll be staring into my soul in that picture. So I sent that message, no reply, all right. Waited a bit longer, no reply. Days went by, no reply. She'd left me on delivered. I imagine she did that thing on Snapchat, I'm not sure how you do it, where you like half scroll, so you can like read a message without opening it. So it just, she left me on delivered basically, which did hurt my ego a bit. And you know, <laughs> I remember, I was watching one of her stories on things, so she'd still not message me back. And all, you know, I would have preferred, yeah. Well, let's not get into it. It's, it's, it makes me cringe thinking about it. But I'm watching one of her stories or something, and you're not gonna believe me when I say this story. <laughs> it just makes me laugh thinking about it. You're not gonna believe me, but I tell you, I swear on my life that this story is true. I'm watching one of her stories, um, you know, my phone, my phone was like down here. So I'm like looking at it like this, you know, a terrible neck posture. And I had a bagel in the other hand. <laughs> I'm eating the bagel. And I play the story and there's no volume. So I tried turning it up with one hand and I must have like pressed the volume button and then must have pressed the phone into like the sofa. So it pressed the um, power button as well. So it took a screenshot. Now I'm not you know, well versed in Snapchat, but I think when you like take a screenshot of people's messages or like stories or whatever, it like notifies the person or whatever. I know with messages it like lets people know. But yeah, I'm not sure about stories. So I like took the screenshot and I start freaking out with my bagel still in my hand. I'm like, no, she's gonna think I'm a weirdo. Ultimately I should have just left it because, you know, I didn't know if she was gonna see it. and if she did, who cares, you know? It's it's just one of those things. So I message her, <laughs> I message her and I told her the truth of what happened. And like I said, it's an unbelievable story. You probably don't believe that I was just eating this bagel and I accidentally took a screenshot. But I explained what happens like, oh, I, I was eating the bagel and I accidentally pressed the power button and it took a screenshot. And she replied back to me and she said something like, as you do or summer, as in like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> she, she, I, I guarantee that she did not believe me. She was probably just like, okay, this guy's creepy. He's trying to, he's taking screenshots of my stories and things and, you know. But yeah, that, so that definitely was a, a low, shall we say. I was down bad that day. And then there was, you know, I started watching more of her stories without a bagel in the hand. In the hand. I was more careful this time. I was watching more of her stories and I noticed that this girl, you know, wasn't really the type of girl I wanted to pursue anyway. She was, 
you know, kind of provocative. Um, I saw like stories of her where she, one of her friends was flipping twerking on her on some video, which I was just like, okay. I think her silently rejecting me is probably the best thing that could have happened. Um, so yeah, months go by and then she suddenly messages me back saying, oh, are you still free to do the recording thing? So I'm like, wow, she must be, she must be desperate then. So I was like, you know what, I agreed to do it, so let's just get it over with. It's going to be kind of awkward, but you know. So she tells me like the day we're meeting up, and it was also, I think, like a week before her assignment was due, so that's another thing that was like a red flag, just major procrastination when she's had months to do it. So she messaged me saying like, oh, I um, when are you free? And I said, oh, I'm free around lunch and the period after. And she's like, okay, do you want to meet up? outside the library and then I'll take us to the recording studio and I'm like okay so I meet up with her and then there's also this um <coughs> guy that's with her that I recognize from the gym you know I like spoke to him a few times and what have you and something clocked in my mind which is like okay either that guy's her boyfriend <laughs> and she's brought him here just to be like things of or maybe you know he's helping out whatever and she's like, oh, this is uh, so-and-so. He's also doing the backing vocals of the song. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I know him from the gym and stuff. So we walk up to the recording studio. Everything's set up. I'm just there thinking I could be doing better things. But, you know, I'm not going to. Let me just get it over with. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, like, waiting for them to set everything up. And some of the recording things are not working. So she's like, oh, let me just go uh, get the music technician. So I'm stuck in this recording booth with the other guy. And, you know, I'm just making basic conversation stuff about the gym or whatever and saying, like, oh, what are you doing with this music? And so, as I'm speaking to him, I'm, like, looking at him, and I think he's sort of looking at me, but I can't clock it. And we've sort of got, like, like the same thought, I think, where we're thinking, what are you doing here? What's the actual reason why you're doing this? Because, like I said, the guy could have been the girl's boyfriend, I don't know, but... We were looking at each other like, are you just here because the girl is fit? And, you know, because she's an attractive girl. Which, you know, to be honest with you, was kind of the case. She, I'll, I'll admit that, all right, she was fit. So I'm just there to, like, you know, contribute to the song and make beautiful music. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I talk for a bit. Eventually she comes back and she's like, right, we can do the song. Um, I do the song in one take because I'm flawless. So maybe we're running out of time. I don't know. Uh, I didn't make any mistakes, anything. Do the song. And she's like, fantastic. Okay, thank you so much. And yeah, that was it. So I like, she's still in the recording studio, like fixing some stuff. I'm like, all right then, I'll see you around. And it was so funny because it was sort of like how when you're like walking the streets of your hometown or something and you might see someone from high school that you saw like every single day for five years but yet you completely blank each other like you've never even met. That's what happened with that girl, right? I'd be like walking into the lunchroom and I'd like see her sat on a table with people or whatever. And she'd like sort of glance at me and then like look away, like not wanting me to like say hello or anything. So I was just like, oh, well, you know, that's that, I guess. But I guess, <laughs> you know, the moral of this story, boys, is chasing women and having this sort of like neediness and, you know, you know, relying on text messages too much and just putting girls on this pedestal and like doing things for them just because you think they're, they're attractive is very unattractive. You know, people are not going to have respect for you if you're just a simp. It's simple as that, you know. A girl might be nice to you because you're doing nice things to her, but at the end of the day, she has no respect for you and doesn't probably doesn't want to do something serious with you, pursue a serious relationship. Because she just sees you as, oh, the guy that, like, you know, buys me flowers or, you know, my bestie who I can talk about anything and talk about my boyfriend who's cheated on me five times and, like, you know, is um, alcoholic and what have you. Um, but, yeah, so that's <laughs> that's my... Um, I think when I sent that message, I was, like, the first proper time that I'd, like, hit on a girl, if you could call it that. Which, you know, of course, the first time is not going to be successful most of the time. So, you know, at least you can learn from my <laughs> cringy, cringy past 
And I can guarantee now that I don't do those sort of things now. You know, if I'm like messaging a girl or whatever, I don't just like, you know, shower her with confidence, confidence, compliments. Don't give the girls confidence, boys. Make them feel like shit. Red pill st uh, stuff. <laughs> Red pill. Like I, like I said, I stutter sometimes, I so please excuse me, but you know, we'll use the Andrew Tate now, just treat her like a bitch like she is. No, of course not. Don't shower her with compliments though, because people, they go to two extremes. They don't know whether or not they should, you know, treat the girls like shit because all the bad boys get all the girls or like treat the girls nicely like I should do, but then they get no girls. You need a good balance in between of where you're exciting and, you know, you're not just complimenting her all the time, you know, you're like teasing her and stuff and what have you. You just need to be more diverse in the way you act and surprise people like I did surprising the karaoke. I remember one of my biology teachers, she saw a video of me doing the performance and she told someone like, oh, I always thought he was quite quiet and withdrawn. Which is not the kind of person that I am. I don't know why she thought that. Maybe it's because I didn't give two shits about biology. So I didn't stick my hand up to answer questions. And didn't know the answer to questions when I was asked. But anyway. Just be surprising. Don't chase women. Don't be needy. Be needed. Take care boys. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. Um, always wear your seatbelt. Goodbye. New videos in the car coming soon.